today the National Trust have got this instructional video for you to show you how to plant a Gallipoli oak for our project. Here we are at a site at a fairly typical Melbourne school, facing northwest, hot dry conditions similar to what you'd find in the Mediterranean areas from Palestine to Spain where these particular species grow. What we're going to do now is, with this site here is it's about a metre square. We're going to um, plant this tree once we've prepared the hole. First we're going to do is chip off these weeds, like so. Fortunately there aren't many weeds on this particular square metre, but sometimes you might have to use a herbicide to spray out some weeds, then dig it over. Um, it's really up to what you have. We don't have many here to deal with, so it's easy. Now next, <coughs> We're going to use one of these electric kanga hammers because it's really hard to dig over hard soil with a bar and a shovel or a fork. This makes it so much easier and we'll get a much better root system from using a machine like this. So bear with me, bear with, me with the noise. There we are, all dug over in a matter of minutes. It'll take ages doing it in more conventional ways. Now we're going to form a carving hole, if you like. We don't want smooth edges to our hole, otherwise the roots will have trouble getting out of the, the planting hole. And that's about, that's about all we want. Next is going to get the plant and put it in the hole. All right, our next step here is having prepared this, dug over this hole roughly, which is what we want. You'll see it's a fairly heavy clay loam. And so to get better drainage for our tree, we're gonna add liberal amounts of gypsum, probably three, four handfuls here per square meter in the hole as, a, and as well as around the hole. And this will help the drainage no end. Uh, brings the clay particles together to a, for a better result for the tree. And having done that, our next thing we have to do is then take the plant out of the pot. Uh, and I think the best way we can do it here, in this sort of pot, is just to take, just run your hand down the side. Sometimes they can be a bit tight, these plants in the pot, and it comes out rather easily this way. Having done that, we put our hand over the, the root ball and invert the, tr invert the tree like this. If it has trouble coming out, it might be a little bit pot bound, it's unlikely to be. We just tap it on the side of something solid, which should easily dislodge. So, with our hand, hand underneath, we're going to place this tree in the hole. You should notice already that the top of this root ball here is slightly higher than the ground above, and that's what we want. We're going to slightly tease out the roots here, see how it easily comes away? That's what we want. And even at the base of the, hot, base of the uh, root ball here, we're teasing out, slightly teasing out the roots. We don't need girdling or spiralling roots here. You can feel them with your fingers. You're not going to do much damage. Our next thing we need to do is backfill the hole. Just roughly with the soil we have around, like so. You can use your hand or a shovel, doesn't matter. i go for a shovel in a second. We're actually bringing it all together. Our next operation is to create a well for this the water for this tree so, so it stays located the water next to where we want it next to the roots of the tree so what we're doing here is we're building a little wall or what we call a berm to chop it up a bit so we're doing this on the low side of this planting hole there's no need to do it up there on the high side on flat ground you do it all the way around and it's nice to break it up really well here if we can get some fine particles near the base of the tree, the fine material is working its way through in the root, into the root system of this tree from our, uh, our nursery soil. And just firming it around, you can even use your feet around the hole like this, that's fine. And there we pretty much have it. Right, our next step is to water the tree immediately once you've planted it and minimum 20 litres of water, which we have here. 
And you notice where the water's, water's being poured? It's not being poured at the base of the tree where we wash the soil away. It's being poured here whereby it comes right through the root ball without washing away the base of the soil. See this plant blowing a little around in the wind is remaining upright, it's not flopping over. Nice stout trunk for the size of the plant. It's got some lateral limbs here, so we don't need to stake this tree. Uh, what we will do though is guard against some um, accidental damage that may occur by putting a tree guard over it. And these, these are the tree guards you'll get um, when you get your tree. And we're merely going to gently place it over these lateral limbs here. Um, like so. You can see it's fairly equidistant radius from the centre of the tree to the edge of the, uh, the guard. And to ensure the guard stays in place, we're going to put in three stakes right next to the guard. There's a sort of triangular configuration, like so. Just press them in there like that for a moment. And there we are, protected the plant. We're going to hammer these in with a little sledgehammer Lay the security even more so. Our next step, having watered our tree, is then to mulch it. And why do we mulch? We mulch to retain the moisture and reduce the weed competition. Weed seeds can easily fly into here, but certainly annual weed seeds. And by applying a mulch, perhaps in the order of 10, 10 centimetres thick, we're reducing our weed competition because we want the tree to grow without the competition from other, other plants. So just a matter of liberally putting this around, like so, some in with the inside the protector here. sure we have that well done and a coarse mulch is good because uh, you have a fine mulch you know compost you can set up uh, areas between the uh, trunk and where the mulch is where rotting can occur so a nice coarse mulch is the preferred way to go there's two 20 litre containers of mulch here and this is going to be more than adequate for this tree so. Around. Our tree is planted. So when you get to the Liblio, you will see the plaque with it. It'll be an aluminium plaque containing this information. And all we want to do is try and set this plaque on top of a piece of concrete or whatever you've buried in the ground next to our tree. Uh, we'll probably put a bit of silicon on the back of this and adhere it to whatever you choose to use, stone or concrete or whatever. Um, and I suppose some, some sort of distance like this away is probably adequate. And uh, what you have here now is a living memorial to what happened 100 years ago at the Gallipoli Landing. So uh, take from it what you will, but uh, hopefully we have a 100 year old tree here in 100 years time.